everyone, welcome back to Carrots and Olives. My name is Brittany and today we are going to be opening up my Pen Chalet order. I want to thank you for those who have used the Pen Chalet link for your first purchase as I was able to use those funds to fund this order and share with you. So to get started, you can see <laughs> I have gone crazy. I don't know what it is with me and inks lately, but I've been obsessed with buying inks. I've also been obsessed with watching people swatching inks. So maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But today we're going to be swatching some inks and I did get a new dip pen um, because we all know what happened to my uh, Amazon dip pen or well, glass dip pen. I messed it up. So anyway, we are going to be using this dip pen to swatch these inks. And I think I will, I will be using some of these inks for the August currently inked fountain pens. So let's just get started. Okay, so this is what I got minus the coloring, although I thought I purchased a coloring extra set. So I had to go back and check my order. So I have three Dominant Industries inks and two Van Diemen inks and then a Eero Su Utsushi pen. Um, I just, before we get started, I do want to say that I'm so sorry for those of you who are having trouble watching my videos because they are shaky. I'm doing my best to see how I can avoid that with this video as this is the first video since I've no since I got the comment about it. So I'm going to try my best. I use a canvas light lamp thing. Uh, so for those of you who use that for your videos or use it for something else, let me know how you use it to avoid a shaky image and I also film from my phone so I've been using this setup for about two years now and I'm just not quite sure why it's so shaky the only difference that has changed since my setup is my new desk which is one of those electronic desks the flexi spot that can go up and down and maybe that's what's causing the shakiness I'm gonna do my best maybe in post I can try to fix the shakiness I personally don't really see it that much. Sometimes I see my canvas shake a little bit when I'm writing or when I'm putting heavy boxes on the table, that kind of thing. But other than that, I don't really see it. And so I feel like it's not shaky. At least the video doesn't seem shaky the whole way through, maybe in some instances. So we'll see how I can edit. But I'm sorry for those of you who get vertigo or get sick and just can't watch my video. Thank you for letting me know and I hope even if you can't really see the whole video that you can at least listen to me and so I will try to amp up my verbalness <laughs> when I'm doing these videos. Let's see. Okay so we got some colors. I don't have any of these colors obviously and I'm excited to get into it so I am going to push these to the side. Very uh very smoothly in a sense. And then I have my waters ready. I have a watercolor brush. And I did get a question about this. This brush, there's nothing hugely special about it. I think it, you know, doing swatching could work with any watercolor brush. This is a brush specifically made for watercolor and it is by the brand Wander Forest. And this is just a half inch petal brush. So it has this end that looks tapered. I just pulled this one out of my, <laughs> out of my watercolor brush like stack and any watercolor brush will work. You don't need this one or this brand or anything. I do have a cloth to wipe everything on and I'm going to use this guy, which is a medium nib. There was a medium and a fine and I felt like I would prefer a medium so we could really see the ink better than using a fine. And I'm gonna also use my coloring stack here of papers and also I'm gonna use this um, Hobonichi Tacho. 
So some things have changed here and I guess we could talk about that briefly. So I wasn't really sure how to use the monthly and I was thinking about maybe documenting when I do make purchases and when they arrive and things like that. I haven't really been uh, documenting that very well, but I can always go back and do that. Um, and then for the first couple of months, I was actually doing some drawing and drawing my day. And uh, then I just couldn't keep up. So, and that's pretty much because I just have so much going on. Um, but I really did like how this was going. I was just using a regular micron to draw my day. And yeah, you can see I didn't get very far. But I did do a draw my day in the past, which went really well for um, a whole year and a half, I think. And, but now I'm just, I'm just not able to keep up with it. So then, since then, I've decided to use this for inking, um, showing my inks for the month for those pens that are inked up. And I will talk about that more in my um, review of my currently inked pens. So for this swatching, I do have some pages, quite a few pages that haven't been used. And I think I'm just going to show you what the inks look like on Tomoe River paper in this book. So let's open up my new dip pen. And this one is the comfortable wooden body. There was a couple of other options, but I wanted to go with this wooden body. And I like how it comes with a wide like plastic rubber thing to protect the nib. And actually this wood piece holder, pen holder, is quite small. It's very lightweight. It's, it feels like it's nothing in my hand. So that may be good or bad depending on who you are. I don't mind it. I like pens that are lightweight and I like pens that are can be heavy. So I like it both ways. But this one in particular is actually quite short, the body here, so the length. So that is interesting. I am ready to start. Let me just pull out some empty coloring papers and uh, doo -doo -doo, just pulling these out. I have kind of been a little bit inconsistent with the way I swatch. At the beginning, I was swatching my inks like this and doing dots and that was how I wanted to do it. <laughs> but then I started to do it like this and add a little bit of flair so I could see them on the edges here. So that's how that was going. But I really liked how Amanda B does hers and many other people do it this way as well, where you swatch, you make a larger swatch and that's what I realized I prefer because then you could really see the ink and you can also see the, um, the edges of the paper as well. So I could see more of the ink. I don't need so much white space. I really want to see the ink itself. So I really like it this way. And that's how I'm going to carry on swatching for now. Okay, so let's get started. And I'm trying to figure out. I am right-handed, so majority of things should go on the right side. Okay, so we're going to start off with Dominant Industry. And this box is very pretty. This is the Painter series. So I think there's only a couple of inks in this series. It comes with a bag, which is really nice with packaging, but not very practical for like daily use. But I guess if you're traveling, you know, you have a place to put it. So I keep this in the box and I really like how they have it here. They have the color 
of the swatch of ink. Also on the little stickers that give the name. So you could see the color at the bottom. Let's see. And I love these bottles. There's is it 30 mLs, 25 mLs in each of these teardrop bottles. And I'm just going to dip this in water and just wipe it off real quick. And then let's dip this in here. Okay, so my first thoughts are that this dip pen is very smooth, not scratchy. And I'm able to write for a long period of, you know, for a lot of letters in comparison to some of my other nibs. So this is the Painter series. And first impressions, this uh, ink seems like it's going to be really light in a regular fountain pen. So this is the Le Nymphes, Nymphes. I don't even know how to say that in French. Matin. Matin is morning. I know that. Uh, it's just morning clouds, I think. Is the translation okay? Whoops, okay, so there's a little bit of shake there, just trying to dip it and this is very light, but it's pretty. Okay, so we'll see how that one dries and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so next is another Dominant Industry. This is another painter series and this one is Les Nymphies Les Nuages. And I think that's Night Clouds if I'm not mistaken. I'm probably mistaken. <laughs> so let's give that a good shake. It has like a purple shimmer at the bottom. And I hope this one is a little bit darker. Now the one thing about having a really light um, dip pen holder is that it could stain and if that bothers you, don't buy a light pen holder. Okay, so dominant. Dominant industry. It's very dark now, maybe because I still had water at the top. So let me go over. Painter series. Yeah. 
and then this one is the Le Nymphius Nuage or Le Nuage. Okay, that looks a little bit darker. Let's see. So this one's pretty. It seems like a typical teal, but I know as soon as it dries, there's gonna be more colors involved. And it does seem more darker, especially than the last one. So I'm setting that aside to dry. And let's move on to the next one. All right, so next is a Pen Chalet and Dominant Industry exclusive, which is Horseshoe Bend. And I think I might have to pull out my handy dandy razor here. And I forgot to mention that in all the dominant industry boxes, you get also a little pipette. So that could be very handy for swatching in general, and you can use that for all your colors. So this is not part of the Pearl series, which the Pearl series um, has like the shimmer and glitter. This is just a typical regular dominant industry ink but it's an exclusive <clears throat> all right let's see how beautiful this is dominant industry and pen shall I? Exclusive. All right. Let's see. Ooh, this is really pretty. I love this color. It's so dark. And I can't pinpoint any color in my collection that looks like this. So this is a win for me. It's like a really dark teal. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so now I'm moving into Van Diemen's. This one is from the Voyager line. And these are 30 ml bottles. The one I'm gonna ink up is K Koti. Interesting. Ooh, look at that. So believe it or not, this bottle is super short and compact and actually has more ink than the uh, dominant industry bottles. <laughs> All 
Alright. Ooh, this really saturates the nib really well. So Van Diemen. Or Van Diemen's Voyager. Oh, there's no apostrophe. Oh well, this one is K. Cot or Coty. This is pretty. Okay, this looks very similar. Oh, not really. Well, okay, so if you're not looking at side by side, it reminds me of the last ink we just swatched. However, now that I'm looking at both of them and you're not being able to see it, they are different. But this is really pretty. This leans more blue, whereas the other one leaned more green, but they're both really gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's move on to the last one. So the last one is another Van Diemen's. This is the, um, it says Birds of a Feather, Fountain Pen Ink, Mandarin Duck Nape. I think this was the, the group of Van Diemen inks that sold out really fast. And I really wanted this color. It's in the similar family as majority of the other ones I just swatched. We all know I like blue and teal and greens. So let's see how this one differs. Mandarin. Look how much words I can get out of one little dip. Mandarin. Duck. Nape. Looking pretty. I like, I like this light color into the dark color. All right, let's see how it swatches. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Just gorgeous. All right, so I'm gonna let these dry and then we can look at them all at once to see how they look side by side. And I will be right back. Oh my gosh, you guys, these colors are absolutely gorgeous. 
I can't help myself. I'm really excited about these colors. I think they look really great together on one page. And look at that. They all have shading properties. And these two have a little bit of sheening to them and some really nice dark shading. Sorry, these two at the bottom, the Van Diemen's. And then you can see some glitter in the K-Coty. And then also I could see the glitter in the um, Dominant Industry Painter Series, the Le Nymphias Manta. Um, now for the others, I don't really see the glitter. So anyway, I'm really excited about these colors. Okay, so let's look at them together side by side. We will start off with the first one, which is the purple. There's the blue. And then we had the, the exclusive and then the Van Diemen's K Coty and then the Nape. Mandarin Duck Nape. Okay, so we can see these are pretty close. Um, again, this one's more of a deep teal. This one's more of a blue teal that's still deep. And then this one's actually more green when I compare them against these. Um, this one's a very light blue, a very light purple. So a little bit um, unsure about how these will work in a fountain pen for legibility. But overall, really excited about these. And I forgot to put the name. This one is the Horseshoe Bend from the um, Pen Shelley and Dominant Industry Exclusive. I forgot to put the name down. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. Before I go, I wanna know which one is your favorite and which one do you think is my favorite? Let me know in the comments below. I wanna thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye.